Hi guys, I'm here back with another math video. Uh, today we're going to be doing the world's hardest, easiest geometry problem. Um, so take a look at the problem. Uh, the job is to find angle X with only the information given. Uh, you only need elementary geometry for this. You don't need trigonometry. Uh, but it is harder than it looks. So just try it out. Hit pause if you need to. Um, and without further ado, we will go into the solution. Um, for those of you that tried this, you probably realize that you can't actually do it with just the lines given. It's just not possible. Um, so we actually have to draw some extra lines. But before we do, let's just find out some angles that we can uh, that we can solve for with the given lines. First, we know uh, many of you probably realize this is an isosceles triangle. The bottom two angles are 80, blah blah, and this is uh, this is 20 degrees. Um, some of you have probably realized that this is 30 degrees because uh, 70, 80, and then uh, since it has to add to 180, uh, this must be 30. And um, yeah, that's that's I think that's about. Oh yeah. And you might might have realized that this is um, 140 degrees, and that this is, of course, 40 degrees because 20, 20, and this has to be 140 uh, because it has to add up, and thus this is 40 degrees, which um, I guess is sort of progress progressing, I guess. So, well, okay, let's see what we can do. So uh, first, the li first line we'll have to draw is a parallel line to AB. Uh, I should label this D and E, and this will be F. We need a parallel line from D to F that is parallel to AB. And uh, what does this do? Well, what this does first is whoops, don't want to erase that. What this does first is that this angle right here. Not not uh, not including FDB. This angle right here is 80 degrees. Uh, I should probably get rid of this small mark right here because that's not included. That angle there is 80 degrees. Why is it 80 degrees? Because DCF is similar to ACB. They're both isosceles triangles, and they both have an angle of 20 at the top. So this is also 80. Uh, that's going to have to squish in there. And since that's 80, this is 100 degrees. And uh, same thing here. Since that's 80, uh, D ADF is also 100 degrees, um, so this is actually 60 degrees, I might say, because um, 60 plus 20 plus 100 is also 180 degrees. Um, okay, cool. We have, uh, I guess, we have more angles. They don't seem to be all that useful, though. Um, maybe we can make one more line. Maybe we can make a line from. Uh, we can utilize F and make a line from A to F. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well. Uh, I believe that uh, triangle A ADF is congruent to triangle BFD. So ADF. I usually don't write these down, but this is. Uh, I think you'll need this info later, so I'll just write this down here. So ADF is uh, congruent to BFD, and why is that? Triangles. Um, well, first of all, uh, uh, CDF is isosceles, so CD equals CF. And then CAB is also isosceles, so CA equals CB. So naturally, if you subtract uh, the same thing, uh, if you subtract this by this, which is equal to this subtracting from this, these two are going to be equal. So DAD equals uh, BF. And since those two are equal, so AD is congruent to BF, and DF is congruent to itself. And uh, also, ADF is equal to BFD. They're both 100 degrees. Uh, ADF and BFD are congruent by side angle side congruency and if they're congruent by side angle side congruency and we know that uh, FDB is 60 degrees right here then we know that this is also 60 degrees because these both are 60 degrees thus uh, this is an equilateral triangle okay this is an equilateral triangle um, well that's that's great so what does this really accomplish well let's think about this <coughs> So if we know that this is 80 degrees, uh, CFD is 80 degrees, and we know that DFEA is 60 degrees, 80 plus 60 is 140, and this is 20 degrees, this also must be 20 degrees. Since we know that, uh, you know, so CFA, CFA is equal to 80 plus 60, which is 140, uh, 140 plus 20 is 160, 180 minus 160 is 20, so CAF is 20 degrees. And thus, since these are both 20 degrees, uh, triangle CA F is isosceles. Sorry, my pen isn't working very well today. 
That's isosceles. And uh, that will come in real handy later. And oh, oh yeah, I have to label this G. We'll draw a line from C to G by sectioning right down the middle of the isosceles triangle. You might see. And if it's right down the middle, this is 10 degrees. And yeah. Okay. Um, here's where I stop for a sec and let you try to solve it from here. And I'm going to give you a clue. In this diagram, which two triangles are congruent? Um, that might help. Okay, let's keep going. So the two triangles that are congruent that are actually important in the proof that you might see is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle uh, CEA. If you just look on the diagram, you can see where those triangles are. And the reason they're congruent is first they share base, uh, share AC. They also um, share the two, two, two of their angles. Uh, because CAG is 20 degrees and um, so CAG is 20 degrees and um, ECA is also 20 degrees so they both share tw the 20 degrees part and their other angle uh, CAG uh, sorry CAE is t 10 degrees and um, I believe GCA is 10 degrees so uh, um, by angle side angle they're congruent and room by angle side angle. So again, A G C and C E A. Okay, uh, that's cool. Where does this lead us? Well, th we use these two pieces of information, and these two pieces of information are important because if C A F is isosceles, then C F is equal to F A. So F A, and if C F is equal to F A, and since uh, A G C and C E A are congruent, then C E is equal to uh, G A. That's what happens when you subtract C F by C E. So if you subtract these two equations, so it's, whoops, C F minus C E equals uh, F A minus G A, and there you get that uh, E F is equal to G F. So these two things, these two things right here are equal. And uh, well, why is that important? Well, that might be important because uh, GF, remember, is part of an equilateral triangle. That GD, <coughs> sorry, DGF is equilateral. So this is, GF is also equal to FD. It's also equal to FD. And since FD is equal to EF, this, even though it doesn't look like it, is isosceles. It's really hard, but so this is what this triangle here, triangle DEF is isosceles. And it's really hard to see, but which ones are isosceles? If EF and FD are isosceles, then the isosceles triangle is supposed to sort of look like this. Um, F E D it's supposed to look like this and since we know E F D is 80 what this sort of looks like is um, something coming out from E where this is X and this is 30 if you just flip it around so if this is 80 and uh, D E F is isosceles then D, uh, D E F must equal 50 degrees because uh, again uh, Angle DEF and EDF must be equal, and all the angles have to add up to 180. And if you, it's just like 180 minus 80 over 2 is 50 degrees. And thus, 30 degrees right here, this 30 degrees plus X equals 50 degrees because DEF is isosceles. Therefore, X equals 20 degrees. Wow, we did it. Had to draw three extra lines, do a bunch of math. Uh, random coincidental isosceles triangles, but we did it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the problem. I thought it was really interesting. Um, so uh, I guess I'll see you next week. See ya. What normally happens is that we want to get x out of the denominator. And why is that? The reason we want that is because with x in the denominator, if we just plug in 0, the denominator will just equal 0, right? And if the denominator is 0, it's undefined. So we want to get x out of the denominator somehow. And to get x out of the denominator, so we can just plug in 0 and get the limit to be equal 1, we need the top to also be a multiple of x. 
because when you have something like nx over x,